Carl Ice, CEO of BNSF. Welcome to Stanford and Systems Leadership. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, so tell us a little bit about BNSF. Tell it for our viewers who don't know anything about okay. the company. We're a railroad. We, we do handle some passengers, and it's, of course, very important we do that safely and on time. But the vast, vast, vast majority of our business is freight. Uh, we were part of Berkshire Hathaway a few years ago when Warren Buffett was writing his annual letter. He asked us to make, come up with some stats of the amount of tonnage we move between cities in, in, in our country. Uh, and he still uses it today. 15% uh, of all tonnage between cities, regardless of whether the cities are in our geographic coverage and regardless of the mode of transportation, move on BNSF. We do something important. Uh, I think that's why people really like being railroaders is they know they're doing something that's important. Another reason they like being railroaders is we do that one thing. We move goods and commodities from where they are to where they need to be to be useful. But then we have many, many functions that support those. What we run with, what we run on, our, our, our dispatching center, which is much like an air traffic control center, uh, and all the things around all those in addition to traditional functions so people have a chance to do many things and many roles if that's what they want to do. So now in this country, well, railroads are very important for making sure that we can move people and goods across the, the broad landscape. Co company's been around a long time. How are technologies changing the business today versus what it may have been for the last 100, 150 years? Well, we're almost 160 years old. If, if we moved what we moved then the way we moved it then, mm -hmm. you and I probably wouldn't be talking today. <laughs> so the technology's changed a lot, and, and it's, it's across our business. It's really hard to pick a couple things. That could be our locomotives that are tremendous machines that move. That move we can move one ton of freight over 500 miles on a gallon of diesel fuel. Wow. And they have, they're, they're like rolling data centers. So that by itself is, is technology. Uh, the, the way we plan uses more technology. The maintenance we do on our, on our railroad uh, it is deeply based on technology now, where we, we use predictive methods to know where we need to, to work on the railroad. And I tell you, our railroad's in the best shape it's ever been in. It also changes, of course, because it changes what happens with our customers. Mm -hmm. and, and as they change and they develop, or even as, as their markets change, then that means we need to adjust and change. So on the, on the one hand, you have coal. That would, not that long ago, it was 25% of all, all railroads' business. It's not the, the source mm -hmm. it was for electricity. It used to be over 50% of the electricity in our country was generated by coal. Uh, it's much less than that now, and we're we're down from that 25% to more like 15%. So so if that's changed and and how how their whole business has changed, that's had a big impact on us. On the other side of things is is in our consumer business, how how consumers buy has an impact on us. So as as they moved away from bricks and mortar and buying online, uh, I won't tell you that's necessarily great for us because moving mm -hmm. things. Really fast isn't what we do, but but we can do we can do it. We can move things quickly enough with also the transparency people now expect to have to 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 be able to serve that market. And we think we can continue to grow there. That that the consumer products area is a, about half of our market these days. So as you look at changes in technology in other industries, it might be shipping for overseas, it might be electrification and autonomous trucking. How does that impact your business, and how do you make changes to your organization? Uh, depending upon changes that have happened outside of your company. Okay. Well, it all, it all affects us, I think. If you know, I mentioned the, the great opportunity that we have move, moving consumer goods, and, and almost any trucking company you would name, UPS, FedEx, Snyder, Swift, Hunt, all, all those people are, have big relationships with us. So, so on the one hand, they're, they're a way we go to market together and move a lot of freight. Uh, as they can gain efficiencies, though, that could have a big impact on us. So if they're, if, if they're working on autonomous or they're working on batteries, then, then that could have an impact on us. So we work on those same things. Um, I think it's always important that, that one work, that a, that a company works to, to drive forward adding technology, not for technology's sake, but for a purpose. And those purposes can be productivity. They can be capacity with something like movement plan or advancings in the signal system that controls how our trains run on, run on the systems. Uh, or they could be the way we give information to customers, which also then, um, then, then helps us grow. And, and lastly, again, as those same things that, that help some other groups could help us, then maybe a market's open to us that was never open before. How do you think about developing those new technologies internally versus partnering with other people outside? Well, I, we, we do both. I, I think you have to do both. I think you have to have a, a certain capability on your own as a mm -hmm. company. Um, we, I, I think every time one does a partnership, whether it's around technology or whether it's one of our key suppliers, then you, you come together for a reason. Mm -hmm. you, you each have something you, you bring. Um, if you're using somebody externally, it's because they've got a capability you don't have. Or and and when you need potentially need to grow, 
uh, and then and then you work together towards a towards a common goal. I think maybe the difference with with an, a, an established older company and a, a, a smaller tech company might be the the range of risk yeah. reward that one one could do. If you're if you're dealing with a great big company, maybe they can have a greater reward with a greater risk because they've got the capability to yeah. to sustain that. Um, whereas whereas a smaller company is, that's doing doing a tech startup with us might not. But beyond that, I think it's a lot the same. You, you figure out what each of you are bringing, what you're trying to accomplish together, and, and then work towards doing that. So now you've been in the railroad business a long time. A really long time. As you, as you think as a systems leader, and understand you know, how everything interconnects together, what are the two or three things you've had to change and adjust in your leadership style in the last few years? Well, you know, I, really, I really want I think, to start the answer to that a little differently because I, I think there's a lot about leadership that's enduring, and we've worked on leadership for a really long time. Uh, leaders, leaders matter. Leaders count. Uh, and, and that it makes a difference to an organization. And so I think the greatest leaders always have a set of skills they can bring to place for the circumstances they're in. And so, so some of the things one might use more now, that may not necessarily be something that, that you didn't do before. But I, but I would say communication always been important, even more so now. Transparency is really important. We have 40, over 40,000 people at BNSF. Getting all 40,000 people pulling in the same way, you can only do it if you're transparent about what you're trying to accomplish, why, how you're doing against that. And I expect, I think in today's world, people expect that they have a dialogue and a conversation. So it's not just a one-way communication. So we spend a lot of time trying to be out with, with, with our, our, all the folks at BNSF and, 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 again, have a conversation with them, not do out to tell them what's going on, but have, have a conversation. Uh, I think... It's, it's not a different thing, but certainly important where you do it. It's always been true where you spend time is what mm -hmm. people think are, are important. And so certainly as, as we have technologies we need to understand, it's important we, I spend time there. Or as we have some we may roll out that could make a difference. So we have a, a thing called positive train control that's now a government mandate that actually BNSF started before it was a mandate. Uh, we have a, we've had a monthly meeting for five years. Or how are we doing against that? What do we learn, and how do we need to make adjustments? Because I think it's important that that I do that. Um, and then I think the la the other thing I would say that that is that also you know, companies with a long history, you've had th we've had things we've done that were successful. We've already talked about coal once already. That's an example of that. That it's hard to let go of that. Mm -hmm. And so three or four years ago, maybe five, it was starting to become clear that coal was going to going to be lower. But that really wasn't easy for a whole organization to, to recognize and react to. And, and even if one knew it, to not fall back to the ways that we always did things and how we, main, how we maintained that part of the track and would it really be lower and so forth. And so that was a case where it was important, I think, for our most senior leaders to press to say, this is going to be different now. We have to have a different plan. So I think it, you know, the things I would talk about would be communication, where, where one spends their time. And then, again, sometimes... Um, we say leadership at BNSF, we say leadership situational, normally empowering, sometimes directive, and I think sometimes if there's something that's going to change and we know we have to react, react to it, that's the time to be directive. So BNSF moves a lot of very important material, right? Energy, uh, food, things that are important to our society but also can be dangerous to move. How do you make sure that safety is embedded into what you're doing and how do you deal with government regulation, oversight, and okay. involvement in your business? So, so, of course, we start with safety that we're going to deliver it. It doesn't require government regulation. Um, and we do, we do move things that are, that are very crucial. I talked about that earlier. We do something that's important. Uh, and some of, the, some of those things are, are very important. They're handled right. They can be handled safely. Um, we, when we think about a given commodity, we think in terms of, of mitigation. Nothing, not, you know, nothing happens. We think then, uh, well, first, for, first prevention, that nothing happens. Then mitigation that... Um, that if something does happen, how it's contained, and then response. Uh, but all that really goes back to our, at the start, that prevention goes back to our overall safety program. It's the most important thing we do. Uh, we start every discussion with that. We expect everybody to take responsibility on that, for that. We've worked hard to have a recognition that, it, that safety is about taking accountability for your own safety, but also for that of your coworker. So we've had, we've had things we've done to try to arm, arm people with the tools to do that. But I think the real magic is as you arm them with the tools, then they start to have an expectation that somebody's going to say something to me. And it's not bad they do. Mm -hmm. It's good they engage. And so, so I think that's changed and driven our safety culture. And, and again, that's very important. Uh, in terms of regulation, um, I mean, ra we're, railroads are, some people 
think railroads are a, a government organization. It's amazing how many people would say, you actually own the track you run on? Uh, so regulation has a big effect on us, and we, uh, we always have, have some, some additional things where I, where I sometimes say we're special. So we don't just have OSHA. We have the Federal Railroad Administration mm -hmm. for safety, we, you know, for instance. Um, and, and there are a lot of regulations that, that, that we have. We don't, I mean, we recognize those people have a job they, to do to protect public safety, so I would never suggest they shouldn't. But over time, there's also things that come along that regulations come about that, that have unintended consequences. And as technology changes, those regulations don't mm -hmm. change. So one of the things we're spending a lot, on, in terms of things we spend time on, uh, one of the things we're spending time on is just that, how we can use technology to move from a command and control sort of mm -hmm. regulatory scheme to, to a performance sort of scheme. And so we can have an autonomous detection car that can go out and run across the railroad and find where there are defects and, and respond to those. And, and if we can demonstrate that we drive defects down and mm -hmm. incidents down and all of that, we can do that as opposed to making sure somebody goes out and runs over the track every day. Right. And those, those people do an important job. Don't, I don't want to minimize that one bit. What they can do that way versus what we can do with technology sometimes can, can completely change how the approach should, should be. One of the themes that we're looking at in the course is how the mix of physical and digital is changing businesses. If you look forward the next five to ten years, what do you think will be the biggest impact of technology and digitization on BNSF? Well, it's hard to pick one. Um, I mean, we talked a lot about technology already, and I think railroads have long been users of technology. Um, I, I think as once PTC is in place uh, as, as a safety system, I think then we, could, we can bring some things to bear with that where we, we tie together something we call Movement Planner, mm -hmm. um, which, which plan, helps the dispatchers with how, how you plan how all the trains would run with, with other of our systems that we could have more um, advanced train operations mm -hmm. and, and, and control those in different ways. And I, so I think as all those things come together, those could be the... The, the biggest changes. Some of those could be how, this, how the authorities for the trains work. They could be a, instead of having a fixed distance mm -hmm. between your stop flights, so to speak, that could be a dynamic moving block and then you get more capacity that way. I think those things as they come about could be the, could be the biggest change, but, but we'll find out. Carl, we're very appreciative of your coming to Stanford. What BNSF, BNSF does is very important to our country. It's very important to all of us as a society, and we're grateful that you'll come uh, to Stanford and help uh, us learn more about your business and ex uh, explain it to the students. Well, I'm thrilled to be here, and I suspect I'll get more out of it than the students do. Carl, thanks for your time. Thank you.